Hey guys, Scott from Aristocob.com here. And Seth from the ShrinkingPastor.com. And together, the three of us, we are Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. Welcome back to yet another episode. Morning, boy. Good morning. How are you? I'm all right. You? Well, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little surly, and we're going to talk about that. But uh, first, let's let's commence to smoking. All right. We're going to smoke some Sutliff Metropolitan, which says to be aromatic blend of Golden Virginia's Rich Burleys and Black Cavendish. Right up your alley? <laughs> it is up my alley. I, I don't think that this thing is, uh, is incredibly popular on the interwebs. No. I, I, wish that, I wish that there was a place where the reviewers would fill out a profile of what their taste is like. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I, I typically like um, English or this or that. So that when they rate something like a Cavendish, you can see it. there's a little bit of a sure. what do you call that? It's a weighing of their opinion. Right. Uh, to me, that smells great. Here you can see, nice and dark. And I have something really exciting to smoke this in today. I yep. am going to smoke this in my brand new Briar cigar from um, Morgan Morgan Pipes. Briar cigar, isn't that cool? Nice, it is. So it, uh, it's slick. It, it's a a cigar shaped pipe. You can unscrew what looks like the ashes here on the cap, and sorry. fill fill that up. Yeah, sorry about that. And then you could, you know, just put the cap back on, toss this in your pocket, and you're ready to go. Yeah. You could even do a char light if you like, so that it lights up easily when you're driving down the road. It's cool. Uh, at any point during your smoke, you could put the cap back on and commence to whatever else you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. But I saw something interesting on a couple of the reviews of this and a couple of videos. The recommendation was to take your tobacco and chop it up relatively fine. And I saw guys, you know, whipping out their pocket knives. Not there's anything wrong with using your pocket knife. But I thought that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, especially if you're going to want to load this thing uh, while, while traveling. And so I thought maybe just maybe, this is the perfect opportunity to buy something. And so anytime I can buy a tool, I'm down with that. So That's beautiful. I, I suspect that this will be the very first time in the history of at least YouTube that a product called a tobacco grinder is actually going to be used for grinding tobacco. What? Yeah. This thing is called the Chromium what Crusher. What else would you use a tobacco grinder for? For grinding... Uh, herbs. Oh, some people call these for, herb for, grinders for cooking. For cooking. Yeah. Yes, and um, non. I if Alton Brown has one of those. I bet he does. Non-tobacco, good uh, smoking, as well. Oh. But check us out. What what's going on inside of this thing? Are it's aluminum, and it's got these zinc blades inside of there, and then a series of holes. And let me let me take this apart further. Just thread it together. This is the main compartment. You can see it's got holes, and anything you cut should drop down into this compartment. And that's got a mesh bottom. It's designed for filtering out pollen. And then in the bottom, it's just an open compartment here. For me, it probably makes sense to just eliminate this one altogether. Yeah. And uh, let's just put this together thusly. And I will collect my cut tobacco in this, what is now the bottom. All right, so you put your tobacco in here. Here, hold that can up, See? would you? Put the tobacco right in here like that. The only problem with doing it straight to the bottom yeah. is that the bottom's not very deep. So that's true. This has a, a deeper. I don't know that that's much deeper. And we're going to put that on and just give it some turns. Now, the thing about this, I read a bunch of reviews on Amazon of various ones, and people complained about the, the zinc blades breaking on these and I tell you I know a lot about zinc but my employer uses a lot of zinc mm. and if you are cramming this thing full of tobacco and then forcing these together You're right you absolutely are gonna break yeah these blades and this tobacco is a little bit moist so it might be a little bit of a challenge to, to, to drop down through those holes but my point here is I just I want to grind it up a bit so it's not quite as as coarse as it is. Sure. Are you smoking this already? Yeah. I'm, I'm not cutting mine up into tiny pieces. <laughs> so 
So let's see what we have now. If we got enough to fill my. You want to get tobacco in your oh, mouth? Yeah. That's how you get tobacco in your mouth. Definitely. Definitely has chopped that up pretty fine. Oh, yeah. I don't know if we can can see the difference there, but that's got hand. pretty good sized ribbons and clumps, and that's fairly fine. So there you go. A tobacco grinder being used for tobacco. I remember the first time I heard about a tobacco grinder, I thought, a tobacco grinder? Who needs to grind tobacco? Now I know why. I was hoping, I was hoping it would be like a contraption with a, a, a handle crank. on the side. I know yeah. that would be neat. And, and, and then you could play get a tobacco tobacco grinding monkey. Get a monkey, yeah, oh yeah, you. that would be cool. Man, technology! <laughs> Monkey's gonna grind your tobacco. Uh, vacuum cleaner's gonna smoke your pipe for you. <laughs> Not even have to do anything. Yeah, that's really what we're all about here at Mark the, Men's Breakfast Club. Rube Rube Goldberg. <laughs> Our life. <laughs> All right. So that, that worked pretty well. I, I, that amount that I had there, uh, I'm learning right now there's no way you could do this driving down the road, loading that up. And there we go. So let's uh, light this bad boy. Now, I am curious about one thing. How it would smoke if it was made of paper? No. I'm I'm seriously wondering why you're not smoking yours. Hey! Awesome. Because well, I didn't know I had one. <laughs> no, you did not. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. You want to grind yourself up some tobacco? I absolutely do. <laughs> you know I do. I bet you do. <laughs> All right, while he's doing that, let's talk about something. Speaking of grinding monkeys. Yeah. Monkey Grinder. Good song by Chagall Guevara. So uh, this weekend, I was in... Um, if you get one of these... Chicago. This has a rubber seal, and it kind of screws in mm -hmm. and out. It absolutely kind it of It doesn't appear in. like it would when I was looking at it. It looked like it would just kind of wiggle it out. Maybe that's because I'm... You're so used to e-cigs having seals like that, but cool. Yep, that's cool. Uh, also, it is advised that at least for a little while while you're smoking this and getting the in, the interior of you this. You don't tip it forward. Develop the nice char. Yeah, you're going to hold it up right when you're not taking a draw off it. Yeah. And I'm just going to occasionally give that a tamp. Perfect size tamper there, Aristocob.com. I don't know. We'll, we'll let tamp-on.org. <laughs> Be the judge of that. <laughs> so I was in Chicago this weekend. And, uh... You just kind of rub it back and forth? Yeah, that's it. All right. And while, uh, while returning, I went through Chicago O'Hare. And as is often the case, they, uh, they stopped me at security and wanted to go through my bag. Now, I've learned to stop carrying things like Silly Putty Eggs, mm. and I don't carry with me all my Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars I used to carry when I traveled. For work, of course. Absolutely for work. <laughs> but uh, they tend to stop and want to take a look at things like PowerPoint pointers, you know, lasers. Mm. Um, they have a real problem with my, uh, my eye pole. I guess that looks like uh, a rifle or something. Yeah. I don't know. But um, very often, they will want me to pull out my pocket monkey. And for those of you who don't know, I don't know if we can see this on camera, that is a pocket monkey, which is a little uh, multi-purpose tool. It's about a millimeter thick stainless steel, and it's designed uh, as a, a, a multi-tool for opening letters. It's got a little... Uh, uh, a little wrench built into it, a bottle opener. As we've talked but before, what is it? It's what's it most used for? Peeling oranges. Absolutely, from what I hear. an excellent orange peeling tool. And at least a half dozen times, I've had a TSA agent pull it out, look at it, run their finger along the edge that is used for letter opening, and say, "It's all right." And I've asked a couple of, "What are you looking for?" And they said, "Well, look, it, it can't have a sharp edge." 
Oh, okay, that makes sense. No, it doesn't make sense to me because you can have wine bottles and you well. I don't I know that you can have full, wine bottles anymore. But you can have ceramic pieces of art in your luggage and they don't bat an eye. And carry on, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, I brought the hand with me from Texas mm. four years ago yeah. on a plane. And I know some things have changed. I did have it in my underwear, so that, <laughs> that may have mm. made a difference. I wonder what happens if you blow out. So from... like the, the underwear bomber, you're like the That's underwear right. handler. Yep. They call you around the TSA. Yep. Don't want to know where the hand has been. <laughs> I wish I'd have known that earlier. Yeah, everyone likes to put it up their nose. So anyway, this is the uh, TSA agent who is now in possession of my pocket monkey. You can see the pocket monkey in her hand. You think she took it home? I don't. You think she looked I at that and said, Gotta huh. have the monkey. Huh. I have been peeling oranges with my <laughs> hand like an idiot all these years using a kitchen knife. But look at this monkey. It was actually another tri uh, TSA agent who took this from me, took it over to this woman who was her supervisor, and uh, she is the one who cast the judgment. And when she came back to me and told me that, well, you know, if you'd like someone to explain to you why we're keeping it, yes. So they took me over to this gal who says, you know, th these are not approved. It doesn't matter what a website tells you. There's some irony the here. Website. Here's some irony. Guess what was just added to Sky Mall magazine? The magazine that is in the back of every uh, airline seat that you can shop and, and spend extra exorbitant retail prices all, while you're flying. Guess what they've just added? Don't they have like lingerie and stuff? In they there do. Too? They do. Okay. Are those things TSA approved for flying? Uh, most of the things in there are designed for travel and designed to be TSA approved. But some some stuff is there just because you're a captive audience. Like they have these uh, like lawn ornamentation. The, if you want to put faces <coughs> on your trees made of right. resin, they have the uh, they the, sell that kind of crap. The glasses that want to be the Oculus Rift, except cost three thousand dollars. The watch TV in your own chair with uh, glasses that have tiny screens on them. Yes, they have that kind of stuff. Yeah. Anyway, it's like the this month, gifts of this catalog. month, they've added the pocket monkey. That was silly. Isn't that ironic? Is it? So this lady, this TSA lady, is telling me, "Oh, we've we've got a warning about these in our break room, and there's a picture of it." I said, "I, ha I have no doubt that there's a picture of a similar multi-tool that can fit in a wallet. Oftentimes, they have a sharp blade on them. This one does not. Yeah, and, and this one is TSA true. approved. On three occasions, she then said to me." Well, don't kill the messenger. Don't kill the messenger. I'm thinking, what a poor choice of words, first off. And finally, the third time she said it, I said, with what? With that? And she then tells me that, I said, what part of that is constituting this uh, as being a, a illegal weapon? And she doesn't point to this part over here which I would expect her to, that is often sharp on these tools. No, she points to the wrench here, and she says, that's a serrated blade. And I put my finger inside that slot and ran it back and forth. I said, this isn't a blade. Anyway, she took it from me. and it Guess it wasn't TSA approved after all. I believe, number one, she's misinformed. Number two, she was on a power trip because I was given her some some flack about believing that she was wrong. She did not like that. But there was the part, the initial reaction that, from me that said, hey, the folks at uh, zoo, Zootility.com, they're going to give me a new pocket monkey, right? Because this shouldn't have been taken from me, and it's their fault for claiming it was TSA compliant. At this point, I'm calmed down. I'm not happy. I want my pocket monkey back. <laughs> I have oranges that are just <coughs> wasting away in my kitchen because I can't open them. And uh, anyway, I'm waiting. It's Sunday right this moment. Yes, we're recording on a Sunday. And I haven't heard back from them. Oh, really? I haven't heard Do they have back. any sort of warranty or anything on their website? Uh, warranty? I mean, I, like a statement about... I don't, I don't know. If it's taken by the TSA, well... I, did, I didn't see it. I know that the... Uh, 
There's probably something a, about keeping the original packaging and, and proof yeah, of purchase. Yeah, well, there, uh, there's a company that makes those um, bracelets that are woven out of uh, paracord. Mm-hmm. The 550-pound paracord that have the snap. And they they make the claim, the disclaimer on their site, if you ever have to use this in the event of an emergency, tell us what happened, and mm-hmm. and we'll send you a replacement. Well, that's nice. Yeah. So it's got like 15 little, feet. Little, so you little, can... A little bit of promotion for them. For That's right. For uh, mm-hmm. saving your bacon. Mm-hmm. But if you use it to save your life, you're not going to be upset about giving them that promotion, I don't suspect. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I don't think I don't think that they're looking for the, well, I was moving and I ran out of rope. And man, it really saved my life. I, I tied the, the, the refrigerator to the mm-hmm. tailgate of my pickup truck. One other thing about this Briar cigar, and uh, this is again manufactured by Chris Morgan. Chris originally was making these all on his own. He's got a, a patent on the the utility of this. How it's made on the inside is unique to Chris. Huh. Um, there have been a number of cigar shaped pipes over the years. He's not claiming exclusivity on a cigar shaped pipe. But the, the design of the way this thing works and why it works so well, because it is a bit of a calabash pipe uh, in that there's a, a, a air chamber right in here where the smoke moves in, swirls around a little bit, loses a little bit of its moisture yeah. before it enters your face hole. That's unique to him. Check this out. He recently came out with a series of these that he called Freak Show. Mm. Not those beautiful. Aren't those cool? Those are cool. You can't see anything. You can only see the reflection across the room. Hey, there's our lights back there. <laughs> anyway, those are really cool. Neat job, Chris. He think I think he made like 17, 18 of these, and they sold just about immediately. You know how many hours I spend in post-production making sure all of this gets edited and put together, and things overlaid? Like you couldn't and add you a just, picture? Like I couldn't add a picture, and you just whip out the iPad? Now for the third time, and then you do this whole thing with the camera. Is that? Is are you getting this reflection right? Is that no? No. How much time are you doing spending doing that? Too much, apparently. Clearly, it's becoming clear. If you had known that we <laughs> did, you see the video two weeks ago? We had all sorts of posters up behind us. <laughs> it's true. They kept changing. It's awesome. It's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I've stopped smoking it a couple times, and it's it feels like it, it it almost went out. But it's not hot. Way up there, it's hot. Yeah. But where I'm holding it, which is where that, that dead air space is, yeah. it feels nice. I like it. Very cool. Look at that. I own a briar pipe. You own a lot of briar pipes, or do you forget the CVS? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Graybo run of Ot Diggity 14. <laughs> Ever since the Kaisers took the word, what was it? <laughs> oh. Grandpa Simpson. Abe. The metric system is of the devil. My car gets... What, 40, 40, 40 rods to a hog's head, and that's, that's the, the way, way I, I likes it. it. <laughs> what else do we want to talk about today, boy? I mean, I that whole thing with the TSA, that just ticks me off. I travel a lot. I just, th- this month, this thing will air on Wednesday. On Thursday, I get on a plane, I'm traveling to San Antonio, Texas. You could talk about what didn't get confiscated by the TSA. No. Well, something didn't get confiscated by the TSA. Something that I got as a Father's Day gift for him, specifically because someone said theirs has never been confiscated by the TSA. Really? Yeah. You know, what's interesting is I traveled um, for about six months and switched out a computer case. I should let me try that again. I bought a new computer case. Mm-hmm. I, I took all my things out of that previous bag, and inside that bag, I found a package of 
I think it was five or six utility knife blades, box cutter blades, a package of them that was in that bag. And I knew when I put them in, it was six months before. Wow. So I traveled a bunch. a bunch of legs and those had not been found. And they take my pocket monkey. There was um, there was some news in vaping this month. Um, the UN kicked some reporters out. Did you hear about this? Kicked out the public. They kicked out the public, which they had voted on, and then they decided unilaterally you know, to kick out reporters without um, without <clears throat> voting. And then they have they had decided to believe ban all flavors of e-cigs and it was it's a, a big conglomerate of countries was um, it the world health country. organization or they were UN part of or it who was it i think it was un because it also included an, an a proposed increase on the tax of tobacco yes that would a take, huge increase 70 like percent. i think it was denmark they said it was going to raise the the cost of a pack of cigarettes from 17 dollars up into into the 50 dollar range Yes, it was, I think it was the, uh, I think it was the UN, um, and they did this without talking, without voting on kicking out the, the, um, the press. The press, yeah. Um, All right, here's a call to action for you guys. Go on eBay, or Seedman.com, I believe, and buy yourself some tobacco seeds because it may be your only option a few years down the road is going to be to grow your own tobacco. And I'm doing that. Yeah? You bet your bippy I am. I will grow my own tobacco in my backyard if I have to. Yeah. Um, Got to figure out how to make lean one Q out of it. <laughs> a World Health Organization panel on Tuesday removed members of the press and an advertisement pops up. Uh, <laughs> Removed members of the press and public from a meeting in Russia, and then quickly adopted a recommendation calling for a huge tax hike on tobacco products around the world, one that would likely harm U.S. tobacco growers in Kentucky and North Carolina. The WHO, which is the World Health Organization, um, which is the health division of the United Nations, is convening this week in Russia for the sixth meeting of the conference of the parties to the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, or COP6. While the tax recommendation threatened sales of U.S. grown tobacco around the world, U.S. officials were not present at the meeting. Um, yeah, it was, it was, and they're really, really proud about it, really excited about this. Um, here's the WHO's specific proposal calls on countries to raise excise taxes on cigarettes to the point at which the excise, excise tax accounts for at least 70% of the retail price of a pack of cigarettes. Economists say that would lead to price hikes above 100% in countries like India, China, Peru, and Colombia. So that's going on. In New York, they're, they're, they've they already um, banned vaping most everywhere. And they are trying, I don't know if they, they succeeded, um, they had a vote last week to try to ban uh, flavored, flavored e-juice, and also, um, they wanted to make electronic cigarettes and vape gear only purchasable in places that are strictly, basically like tobacco places, so places where cigarettes are already being mm-hmm. sold. Um, so they want to limit limit those again to adult only places, um, and just make it so that no one can can have the stuff. Because yeah, I don't have a problem with it being adult only, <clears throat> but. Some of the stuff is being lobbied by big tobacco, right? Right, and that gives that keeps their control oh, yeah. over the distribution of these products. Sure, they're they're terrified. keeps them right alongside their cigarettes too. They're right? terrified of of vaping at its current state. Um, so there's there's just there's so much misinformation out there about it too. I mean, all around misinformation. I, I went to a shop, uh, a vape shop, a little while back, and um, they asked us the ID, and I, I said, oh, does your state have a, um, requirement, a, a requirement? He said, oh, everywhere does. No. That's, that's not correct. That's not factual. A lot of states have That's the one in Kentucky, it. right? Mm-hmm. That was with you then. Yeah. So, um, which, I mean, you know, I'm glad that they're doing that, but at any point, if you're misinformed, don't be sharing that. 
you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's... He was convinced he knew what he was talking about. Yeah, and, and so he said, oh, yeah, there's this ban and it's everywhere. Well, that's not true. And when you s- tell that to someone that is going to take that as the truth and say, oh, yeah, well, that's great. And then they come and find out that, no, that's not true. Then it might dissuade them and think, well, what else are they lying about? So, but anyway. Yeah, I was just in New York last weekend. Yeah. And um, I didn't get to smoke my pipe. I wanted to, but you can smoke almost nowhere. Yeah. And uh, the only place that I could smoke was on, on this area outside of Madison Square Park. And um, every time I had a moment, I had rain. So mm. it wasn't going to happen. They planned that. I think so. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all I got for this week. You? I'd like to Thank know. You do you this. guys cool. have uh, do you have a Briar cigar? What do you think of it? Good job, Chris. I'm impressed. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. That last bowl, I don't know if you saw it. I, I went through it so quickly. Right. I tossed it out, tossed out the ashes, put it straight from this tin. It was fine. Oh, really? So I, I think it's going to depend upon what what consistency your tobacco is to begin with. Sure. I this would, isn't terribly I coarse. would say you may have to grind it up some right. or cut it up, chop it up some. Do you need to have one of these grinders? No, but it's another tool you can own. That's right. Uh, I'd be interested to take just a, a a rope of tobacco and just shove it down in there and see see if you. Can I don't think it would work. I don't think it would work right. No. No. You don't just don't you don't get enough air uh, no, movement through that. No air. This is pretty small. The interior of that. I, yeah, I, I cut know. up a bunch. I cut up a, a lot, thinking there's no way, and I have a lot left over. And what do you think of the tobacco? Oh, we're actually going to say that we well, never do. I know we. <laughs> We we're talking about that. We keep forgetting to mention. Oh yeah, what we what we think. Okay, we last again? week we smoked the the Bar Harbor, and that was a uh, Bar Harbor. That was the second most popular tobacco from Tewksbury. Oh, yeah. I remember that being all right. Yeah. It uh, it was not as good as the Hobbit Weed, which no. I did enjoy. Yeah. And that's uh, the other one's popular. And this, it's it's simple. I mean, it's it is an aromatic, but it's not terribly. Um, complex yeah you it's know? all right yeah it's all right it's not bad i have a try it in the cob to give yeah. a true opinion of this oh is that what we've come to mm-hmm. okay hey we just realized we forgot to mention what we thought about the briar cigar um i like it I do too. it's kind of cool uh what, what i have noticed and maybe you observed if you don't keep token on it you're gonna have to hit it again with a lighter um, yeah. But here for the last five minutes, while you weren't here and while Boy and I were talking, um, I was continually drawing on this, and it's worked just fine. Yeah, it's, smoked. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, if it goes out on you, no, if you're it, not it, smoking. It, you, you don't need it to be burning, right? Right, and it smokes. It smokes pretty much the, the perfect amount for quick for this shape. I think the short, the short, short smoke, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, you're not going to get. Not going to get anywhere near a real cigar smoke out of it, oh, but you no, can no, refill no. it. Um, but you know, I think that that's it's a lot harder to, to get down and relight. Um, you may have seen me struggling with that a couple of times um, to get down there because once I tamp it down, then it's really hard to get the lighter down in there. But then you're done, and you're like, Yeah, it was awesome. It's not a clencher, right? I mean, even though there yeah. are. There's a bead on the end of that bit that you could, but for me, I don't know I'd ever want to do that. No, there's not, there's not enough for me. I'll, I'll tell. I don't know. I like it though. Good job, Chris. Yeah, I think I already beautiful. said good job, Chris, but I'm, it did. It's it's cool. I like it. It's cool. Good to know that we won't have to use this stupid little. Weed These thing. are available through the. Um, um, tobacco pipe collectors, hmm. right? TPC. So we'll we'll put a link to them, and uh, you can check them out there. All right. Yep. Now I'll say goodbye. Goodbye.